<laughs> Welcome to Crooked Silence, a game I guess the developer let me know that they have created. Uh, it's by the same person who made Dazed From Below, which was a game I played January 2019, so basically a year and a half ago, quite a while from now. But when I look back on the gameplay, I do remember playing that, and I do remember that. It was a very strange game, not bad, but interesting at the very least. Um, what else? I guess just that, that's just about it. Well, let's give it a try. It's a pixelated first-person game, though, this time. And the other one, I think it wasn't pixelated, but this one has pixelation, although it's a little bit crisp and clear. I don't know if I can change the visuals to be... Let's see. Pickup, physics, object, pickup. Okay, so at least there's physics. That's pretty cool. Block with axe, crouch, prone as axe. Uh... Eh, that's okay. Let's get into it, though. All music is also royalty-free. Oh, pixelated drive. Pretty cool. Can't wait until we crash into something. Makes me think of like a sound hill opening. Oh. Oh. I don't think we were driving that fast, to be honest. It looked like we were like slowed down to around five miles per hour. But we still somehow screeched to a halt and flipped our car. <clears throat> Alright. Oh yeah, these kind of visuals I love. It's at least what enticed me. Because the developer told me, hey, I made a new game. So I was like, eh, fine, I'll, I'll give it a look-see. Um, at the very least, I mean, like, they told me that the game exists soon after its launch. Because there's one thing I would say in a mild rant. Is I hate, and I absolutely ignore, any form of developer, whether, like, slightly big, or notably, like, you know, not like a solo dev, but any developer who makes a game and then... Wait, did they just make... Did they move? I watched their shadow while rambling. Any developer that... They, they inform me that their game exists, and when I look at the launch date, it's like a year plus old, and I look at the reviews and it shows me that, say, Steam review-wise, there's just like three reviews, and it tells me barely anyone's played their game, and it's been a year since launch sort of thing or let's say three to six months as well and you know they gotten barely any reception and they messaged me saying hey I have a game could you please play it what it shows me is one they either didn't think I existed or two it's a form of indirect disrespect because if they really wanted to make it so their game is played by a bunch of youtubers who play horror games uh, you know, like John Wolf or Mark Blyer, anyone from my size and beyond, then they would let them know at launch or beforehand. Before launch, with a beta key or early access key or launch key. Give it to all the people that are associated with your themes and the genre that you're working with. If you're informing a bunch of YouTubers post-launch, months, weeks, months, years after its launch, and the evidence can be piled on that it's because it's gotten not as much reception as you want and you want more people to see your game so you then start targeting smaller YouTubers in hopes they play your game. What I see it is that means to me that I am, you know, I, I am just a tool to be used, not in the same way as, like, I'm trying to think of the word. You know those kind of people where, let's say you have like an online friend, right? but they barely ever talk to you and they only talk to you when they're bored or when they're suicidal or they're super depressed and they never go to you otherwise like you're you're not a friend to them you're a tool you're a utility to help them when they're at their worst and they're, or they're most bored like sure some people might view that in a positive way of thinking well then that means I, they see me as useful but it's yeah that's all you are you're a tool to help them when they want you but they don't come to you you know, out of respect as a friend. They don't say, hi, how's your day been? It's just, I'm in need of help again. 
hey, I'm depressed, I'm bored. And th when they're bored and depressed, they only think of you then. That kind of disrespect to me. But in a gaming developer standpoint, you only come to me when you think your game needs more reception and you didn't think of me at the start. That's a form of disrespect to me. Like I said, it's mostly indirect, because may maybe they just didn't know, like, I as a YouTuber existed. But it's... Y you guys know what I mean? I feel like I might be misunderstood, and I don't want to be misunderstood as, like, someone who's just, you know, uh, thinking too highly of himself. It's not that. I can... I can, why can I melee with a flashlight? Anyways, I don't know. I'm trying to think of the right wording, though, and I don't want to ramble for too long. Ah, the word. You're, that you're an afterthought is basically what I'm putting at. I really don't like the feeling of people putting me in a slot where I'm an afterthought. Like, like it's obvious that not everyone's going to know every single horror YouTuber. There's probably, like, hundreds of thousands. But... I hate when a developer comes to me after their game has clearly not been received as well as they'd hoped, so they, they just go to everyone else as an afterthought. It's like, why didn't you do that at the start? You had months to do that, and you just didn't. You're only doing it now because you look back on it, and you're like, man, it's got less views or less purchases than I'd want. Well, time to look up other small YouTubers and hope they can pander to me. It's just that level of disrespect I cannot stand. So, where I was going at with this conversation was it was at least good within this re retrospect. I played this developer's games in the past, and the game was launched yesterday. So, it, it's kind of, it's not too late kind of thing. Because I hate the idea of developers perceiving YouTubers as simply a tool. Like, it, it's a... YouTubers and indiv indie developers, it's a reciprocal friendship. If you're going to treat the YouTuber as an afterthought, and that's not going to go too well, except for people who just have no sense of dignity. Or something along those lines. I'm sure people get what I mean, though. If you misunderstand, I, I can respond to comments below, but as I said, it's not about thinking too highly of myself. I'm going to assume that opened the door. Hmm. I don't want to break immersion by my rambling, so I mean, I'll, I'll stop. But yeah, it's the whole thing of if I see a developer who tries to message me, be like, hey, please my, play my game. It's pretty cool. I'm like, it's like so old, and I'm just like, why, why are you telling me about it now? I'll just basically tell the developer to fuck off. Not literally, not literally, but in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to ignore you just like you ignored me. Why the fuck should I bother? If you really wanted your game to be played by smaller YouTubers, medium YouTubers, large YouTubers, let them all know. Not, oh no, I'm gonna... Jeez. But not like months, weeks, years later. I fucking hate that. But it happens. There's a lot of indie developers that I just ignore. But anyways, yeah, we're gonna get into the immersion since the game is now starting, so don't worry, I'm not gonna ramble and break immersion. Oh, wow. Is that a tentacle? Also, is there a pig with human eyes? Quick and fast, but I won't be able to block like with the axe. Well, then we're going to use the axe. Um, yeah, being able to block would be much better. Uh, can I turn up the brightness? Whoa, story mode, faction war, hunger and thirst, give all weapons, realistic FPS prefab main menu. Well, save? This is like a developer main menu, if anything. But yeah, so we're finally going to get into the game. Ugh. In terms of flashlight, what is it? So, one for flashlight, two for X. We want extra light, and I don't want to turn up my monitor to... ...increase the brightness... Uh, ...synthetically. So we'll just go with it. What happened here? We'll, we'll go with the Doom 3 mechanics. I've seen enough hentai to know where this is going. S 
So we can go over here. But let's go upstairs first. Hmm? Loading screen? Oh, there we go. It's interesting because it's like, it feels like this, a similar aesthetic, not completely the same, mind you, as a puppet combo. Like we're in the walls sort of stretch with your, your, with your field of view. Hmm. But at the same time, it reminds me very much about their previous game that I played. Aesthetically speaking. I have no idea where I'm... No idea where I'm going, so I'll just continue to wander. Oh, they, they have the original Mona Lisa in their attic. That's pretty cool. <laughs> mm. Well, this will be uh, horrible foreshadowing. Oh. So she's a magician. She's able to get out of a glass box that rapidly without breaking the glass. Hmm. Should be popping up at some point. Either as a random enemy that I have to fight with the axe and learn the melee combat system. Or something else. I'll say I, I can appreciate the random house noises. They sort of keep you on your toes. So I'm trying to determine will those random... Uh, oh, it's toggle block. Oh, it's toggle block and? Like, if I hit right click, it's a toggle block. But if I hold it down, then let go, so it's both toggle and hold. That's how I think how all keys should be. Like if you hold it for a long enough, it becomes a not toggle, but at the same time, it is a toggle. I like that. A lot of games, especially AAA games, mind you, like say even For Honor and other games like that. And just not just for like you know For Honor specifically, but you know things like um, well, not like Dark Souls where it's like you know targeting in Dark Souls, you want it to always be locked on. You don't want it to be... Stop making me paranoid. I'm about to be attacked. Seriously. I'm super paranoid about it randomly happening. Also, what did I pick up even? Also, save the game. If save even works. I'm gonna switch the axe just in case. Like I said, the aesthetics are just really making me paranoid. How do I get in the inventory? Is there even an inventory? Find out where we have to use the key. No. Ah. Um. I can't interact with the clock? That looks like the thing I found on the bed. Unless I have to find another clock to put it in. In effect, made it look like it didn't exist and started to exist. Mm. 
Why would he do that, man? I don't even know why that cutscene would exist. If it's not scary, then... I don't see the point of that existing. The thing on the road that it was in this room shoves me with his mind like Star Wars Force ability, and then I just... And then I just walk back to where I was? I don't get it. I don't get why that exists. If it's not scary, then what does it hold in terms of story purposes, you know? Wait, can I move this? Ah, oh, so wait, I can... Ah, oh, so if I hold it... Okay, so I can actually push these boxes. I don't want to do that because I probably can't shove them. I can jump on top of them, though. Okay, we learned something, in case we do need to move them around to get higher up on something. But I don't see a point in that fucking uh, cutscene. It serves no story function, among other things. And it's not scary. It's just like, whoa, I got shoved, and you just walk back where you were, and then carry on. Sounds like a nail gun. Like someone's... Someone's, uh... Ugh. Like a nail gun without the... Like the whole, um... Gas compression noise. Or the loud-ass fucking nail gun... Compressor engine being loud as fuck. Alright, so we can go under there. With more of Mona Lisa paintings. This person obviously some kind of scammer selling a bunch of fake Mona Lisas. Not even sure what direction I should go, honestly. Is this. This really makes me think of the Nun Massacre barbed wire trap. Can I even cross this without covering it? I don't. Honestly, think so. I'll do the garage. I'll, I'll like do these directions first. Ah, oh. oh. Hmm. So we need to push the boxes. That's the solution, is it? Okay. We learned something then. It wants us to grab the boxes and push it over. To use, uh, but I could just legit jump if I just, as long as there's no invisible wall. That's that's my, th my that's my <gasps> fear. Oh, we got floaty jump. That makes it easier. What a shitty basement. It's a little late in saying that, especially being how weird it is to imagine, you know, barbed wire covering the floor and all that. You know, it's kind of strange, but you know. Yeah, that's maybe a little bit too far, but, you know, I'll try our best. Uh, that should be okay. <gasps> huh? Nice. I, prob I can probably open the vent in the other room. The vent that I haven't even seen yet. <gasps> nice. Indeed, what a shitty basement. You know, it makes me actually think uh, about what I was saying in the my ramble about indie devs who throw you things after the fact that it's been launched for a long time and it hasn't done well. But there's a different a different reaction you'd have towards, say, a AAA developer, and I, fi I find that at least in self-reflection an interesting thought. Where it's like, if it's an indie dev who hasn't gotten far and has gotten very little views, and it's you know a year since they launched, then it's a clear. Random noises. It's a clear sign. Wait, save. Oh, so that's how you save the game rather than me, what I've been doing the entire time? This is the actual save game? Okay, so. Interesting. But yeah, as I was going to say. Um. It's interesting because it's like. Uh, how I would react to a AAA developer giving me a key months after the fact would differ from indie developers. And maybe some people might think it a double standard or hypocritical thinking, but it wouldn't be. In a triple A developer, there's gonna they're gonna sell 
a decent amount of packages. They'll, they'll obviously have their own projections of how much they want to sell or how good of reviews they want, whether whether Metacritic or not. But in indie games, it's either you do well and you're and you're de you, you know you're you're happy. Like I got 100 downloads. That's a good first step, you know, and then maybe you're an indie developer and then you get 500, then a thousand, or Steam review wise, you got five reviews on your first game and it's maybe stayed that way all the time and you're getting depressed about it. But treating YouTubers as a means of publicity and treating them as an afterthought and just as a tool to expand yourself rather than a reciprocal relationship where you preemptively find who would best suit your gaming genre and your develop uh, and your the game you're developing but a triple a developer is it's like should you be is, it's like at the same time yeah it's like with a triple a developer you know you're probably an afterthought but depending on the price of the game being given a, a key to a game let, let's say Let's say I was given a key, let, I used For Honor as a reference of toggling uh, versus holding. So let's go with For Honor. Imagine you just, you know, you, you got a small channel, you're minding your own business, and Ubisoft comes to you and they're like, hey, we'll give you For Honor, just play some gameplay, you know, stream it a little bit. And you're like, wow, they, they gave me like a, a $60 to $120 key, you know, for whatever fucking edition or version of the game. And you're like, wow, wow, I wasn't expecting that. They, you know, they viewed my channel and they gave me a chance. That typically doesn't happen, but it can happen. You're more appreciative of that, even if the game's been out for a year. Because, you know, they'd be still, their game would be fine without you, but they did it anyways. Not all developers do that, you know, not, not too many big developers, but it can happen. So, it's something people have to at least keep in mind the, the difference. <laughs> Also like the save game music. It's royalty free though, but you know, I, I like it. I'm gonna be expecting definitely a monster soon. I hope people don't mind my impromptu rambling. Another one. So wait, no monster yet? Hmm. So we got two... Monsters definitely should arrive like any moment. Gaming logic is typically predictable. Why hasn't it arrived yet, though? Is it because I'm expecting it and the developer expects that I'd expect it, so they subverted expectations? Hmm. Strange. Uh, maybe sometime soon. Because I know there's definitely monsters in the game and shit, and you get guns, too. Can we fix it? Oh, we collect it and it goes in there automatically. Um, where else? Have we ever found the door that the key would be used on? Maybe I need to find that still. We gotta, we gotta find out where else we can go. If not, I gotta maybe move boxes to find out if there's something behind here. There could be something hidden. I gotta find the next spot, though. Hmm. So what is this? There's a hole here. I wonder if I can break this. Oh! Here we go. Secret? The first of four levers. I found a secret. Okay. I can just barely, barely see the fact that there's actually a destructible wall. Shit, not to keep my eyes open. I want to see the secret. Man, that means it could be hidden anywhere. Like, there's just barely tiny... You can tell. You can tell. There's very tiny, tiny holes. Hmm. It, like, other secrets like that could be anywhere, especially behind boxes. You didn't exist before. Oh, so that was... Oh, maybe it did exist and I just... Blanked out. Because that's the, that was the shadow behind the window. <gasps> but yeah, like, there could be secrets... Behind these boxes and shit. More reason to push shit aside and try to find... 
the last thing for the fucking clock and the secrets. So I'll be re-roaming areas of bin and uh, trying to find other secret walls. Might be difficult to find them though, because that was questionable. And my eyes are getting strained here. I might have to turn up the. Oh, the, the, the effects kind of really fuck with my eyes after a while. So I'm, uh, after a while, I'm sure there'll other be. God, my my pronunciation. I I'm being tongue-tied and fucking up my my speaking today. I mean, today is like I woke up in the morning, and I, I shit you not. I I basically started recording not even half an hour after I woke up, which is usually something I don't do. Ah, vents. That should be a good hint. Either vents for aesthetic purposes, or vents... ...because I can go in the vents. Mm. Yeah, these... Uh, you can tell these vents have no top to them. So yeah, they're just aesthetic vents. Let's see. Oh, well, there's a lot of floating rocks. I wouldn't want to fall off the uh, sandbox, so we're just not doing that. Oh, you! This bitch is here. I don't remember her being here before. But she's strangely here. Making doubly sure there's no uh, secret wall here as well. What are you doing here, though? Wait, she's gone again? Why? The mannequins. I don't trust them. Oh yeah, did I never go this way? And I just, like, fucking completely blanked out of my... And I blanked out of my mind that this existed because I, I I solved the puzzle of pushing the boxes, but then I just never went this way. I've been retracing the entire time, forgetting that it existed. Okay. Either blocked or we just can't open it yet. Alright. Um, I'm gonna be very, very concentrating every single area, though, for those... Yeah. Yeah. For those hidden... Walls. Hopefully I'll be able to easily spot them, though. And hopefully it won't detract from the experience. It's still locked. Wait, but I didn't even get an item. I need the last... Oh, God! God damn! Gotta startle me. Yeah, block. I wasn't expecting that, but it wouldn't have made sense because all other progress was gone. <coughs> well, at least we got. Ah. What the hell was that thing? It looked like some kind of doll. The fact that it actually got me, like it legit. Startled me is kind of upsetting. But even then. Okay, I guess we could maybe. Ah, oh, jeez. Nope. Motherfucker, I wanted to pull out the axe. Hitting two just it would not pull out the fucking axe. Goddamn irritating. Okay, bitch. Can I sneak on him? Oh shit, I could. Oh, I didn't know there was a sneak mechanic in the game. I think uh, a hit in the back was like counted as like some kind of backstab. All right, now let's... there we go. Nice. What? Weird. Pa paper balls. Still gotta look for the secret walls as well. Let's see. Hmm. I 
damn. It just keeps going. Secret walls. Let's, let's double tech. Double double check. Just so you know, I don't ever have to retrace back here ever again. But I'm gonna leave it here. We. I didn't want to stop recording until I met actual hostiles or something scary happening, rather than just me rambling about things YouTubers have to deal with or what I think about personally. Uh, I wanted to at least make it so one video would have some kind of scare to it, or else it just would have been boring. Uh, to a few people out there who'd be like, Nico, this video was just you rambling while roaming in a house, and... And, I don't know, I think the only suggestion I'd have for the developers is maybe leave an option to tone down the filter effects. Because, I mean, I know it adds the aesthetic, but also is... It, it kind of strains my eyes, to be honest, and I can, like, I can game and stream. Like, it's not like I have fucking weak eyes. Like, in terms of vision, yes. But in terms of the ability to concentrate, I'm pretty damn durable. I remember my, when I, my dad was still around. He, he'd like play like Diablo, say, and after like two hours, he'd be like, God damn my eyes, I can't do shit anymore. My eyes are strained, I can't, I can't understand how you can just keep playing. And, I, you know, I, I've streamed Black Mesa Source and played it 13, 14 hour stream without my eyes straining. But this filter effect, it strains my eyes, especially when I'm actually also concentrating on looking for a secret holes in a wall. That it just strains my eyes further by concentrating even harder during filter effects. So I'd say, please leave the option to make it so you can toggle the intensity of the effects. Not like, even if given the option to disable it completely, I wouldn't want to do that because then that would remove too much of the aesthetics. But I would want to reduce it a little bit. Because it just strains my eyes. Like, you can just, like, look at the screen as I just don't move. And you can just... In motion, it you can not maybe see it. Maybe. But when I just stare at a wall, like, say, and don't move. You can tell. And that just... It, 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 it strains your eyes. Either way. Otherwise, I look forward to playing more and finding more spooks. And hopefully finding all those secret levers as well. Because I'm assuming they're secret levers. That they're, they're not related to the store 100%. But I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please leave a like, comment, hit that subscribe button, and become a fluff scarber. Hit the notification down below for updates of my videos. Thank you for watching. And until the next time. Um.